Hi, I'm Lisa. Let's continue the series of listening to native speakers of English in Los Angeles. You will listen to a conversation that I had with a native speaker. In this video, we will cover five different topics. We will analyze the way the native speaker was using idiomatic expressions, slang words, new vocabulary that you may not be familiar with, some rules of English pronunciation, and some rules of the American accent. Let's get started. In my last video, you listened to a conversation that I had with Craig Gagan. Craig is a model and an actor. He moved to Los Angeles from New York three years ago. In this video, you will hear part two of my interview with Craig. This time, he will talk about having a New York accent and what that means when you're working as an actor in Hollywood. He will also demonstrate what the New York accent sounds like. And he will also talk about the differences in lifestyle between New York and Los Angeles. Let's listen to the first clip of Craig. In this clip, he's answering my question about having a New York accent when you're working as an actor. Let's listen to him and then I will come back and I will teach you the expressions that he was using and I will give you other sample sentences so that you can feel comfortable using those same expressions. So you're originally from New York? New York, born and raised. So you have a New York accent? A little bit. The longer I'm out here on the West Coast, the more it's kind of dwindling, but I still have it a little bit, especially when I go home with my family and friends, it comes out. Have you done anything to work on it because you're in LA and you need to maybe neutralize the accent? I definitely have. I don't want people to kind of stereotype me or typecast me as New York characters for everything. So I've really focused on being as neutral as possible. That way I can fit a bunch of different roles rather than just the East Coast ones. Did you figure it out on your own or did you take any training to have a neutral accent? Well, I always knew I had a little bit of an accent, but my acting coach pointed it out and she said that, you know, I really need to make it as subtle as possible. So she helped me and it's something that I still work on all the time. It's really working on the aw sound. You know, when you say dog, you know, that's not as bad as it used to be. A lot of New Yorkers will say dog or coffee or walk, or I'm going to walk the dog to get some coffee. How about water? Or, or water, you know? It's that awe sound. That's what makes New Yorkers really stand out. Awe, awe, awe. And if you only had a New York accent, if you didn't have this neutral standard American <laughs> accent, would it be more difficult to get roles? Definitely. Definitely. There's a thing called typecasting where you'll kind of get stuck playing the same type of character for every TV show, movie, streaming network, whatever it is that you book, you'll kind of always be the same person. And I don't think that's as fun as being a cowboy one day and then being a southerner the next and then being a New Yorker and then being someone from Europe you know I like to put on a bunch of different hats and play as many things as I can yeah makes sense you're much more marketable that way yeah of course of yeah. course and it, it makes you more versatile the first word that I would like to teach you is the verb to dwindle let's listen to how Craig used it a little bit the longer I'm out here on the west coast the more it's kind of dwindling a little bit the longer I'm out here on the West Coast, the more it's kind of dwindling. Do you know the meaning of to dwindle? Craig was talking about his New York accent and he said, the longer I'm out here on the West Coast, the more it's dwindling. And to dwindle means to become smaller, to reduce over time, to decrease, to shrink. For example, you can say, my savings account has dwindled or his popularity as an actor is dwindling. My enthusiasm has dwindled. And the next verb that Craig used is to typecast. Let's listen to how he used it. I don't want people to kind of stereotype me or typecast me as New York characters for everything. I don't want people to kind of 
stereotype me or typecast me as New York characters for everything. Craig said he doesn't want people to typecast him as New York characters for everything. And when you typecast someone, you always give him the same type of role. You hire him to play the same character in every film. That means that actor is typecast. For example, maybe you noticed some actors always play criminals or always play in a comedy. That's because those actors are typecast. Because of his strong facial features and angry expressions, he's often typecast as a criminal. Let's say that again. Because of his strong facial features and angry expressions, he's often typecast as a criminal. Next, I would like you to listen to the way Craig pronounced the preposition to. Listen carefully. I really need to make it as subtle as possible. So she helped me. I really need to make it as subtle as possible. So she helped me. Craig didn't say, I really need to. He said, I really need to. Why did he say it that way? because generally, in English, the prepositions are reduced. That creates the natural sound of stress and reduction of the standard American accent. When we reduce the preposition to, the O sounds like this, uh, t, t. So we don't say, I'd like to talk to you. We say, I'd like to talk to you. I'd like to talk to you. He said, I really need to make it as subtle as possible. Normally, we say that as one unit. I really need to make it as subtle as possible. Did you notice how we pronounce the word subtle? Did you notice the letter B is silent? Pay attention to that. And what does subtle mean? I really need to make it as subtle as possible. So she helped me. Subtle means barely noticeable, almost not noticeable. I'd like to make my accent as subtle as possible. The next expression that Craig used is to stand out. Let's listen to the way he used it. Or, or water, you know? It's that awe sound. That's what makes New Yorkers really stand out. Awe, awe, awe. Craig said that it's the awe sound that really makes New Yorkers stand out. And to stand out means to be noticed. If something stands out, it's very noticeable. For example, you can say, you will really stand out tonight in that red dress. Everybody will notice you because of the red color. You will stand out. And how do New Yorkers stand out when they're speaking? It's the way they pronounce the aw sound. In the standard American accent, in the general neutral accent that's spoken in many parts of the United States, the sound is like this, aw, aw. But when New Yorkers say it, they push their lips forward and it sounds more like an O oh, and they say something like this, or, oh, or. Oh. And that's how you know that someone is from New York. Let's listen to the way Craig used get stuck. Where you'll kind of get stuck playing the same type of character for every TV show, movie, streaming network, whatever it is that you book. Craig said he doesn't want to get stuck playing the same characters on TV. What does to get stuck mean? It means to stay in one place, to not change, to not be able to move. For example, you can say, I don't like my job. I don't want to get stuck in this job. And you can also say, I'm so sorry I was late. I was stuck in traffic. You can say, my car got stuck in the snow. All right, let's listen to the next verb that he used. He used the verb to book. He didn't use it as a noun. For example, I'm reading a book. He used it as a verb. Let's listen to it. For every TV show, movie, streaming network, whatever it is that you book. To book an actor means to hire the actor for a performance, to give the actor a job. So you can say, we booked him for the role. Or you can also say, I'm so happy I booked that film. And that means I got the job. I got hired. But you probably also know to book meaning to reserve. For example, to make a hotel reservation, you can say, I booked the hotel. And when the hotel is full, you can say, the hotel is fully booked. We need to find a different hotel. You can also say, I'm booked for the next flight. So 
If we use it as a verb, it has two meanings. The first meaning is to get hired as an actor, and the second meaning is to make a reservation. Okay, let's go on to the next word. Let's listen to the way Craig pronounced the word southerner. Being a cowboy one day and then being uh, a southerner the next. He said a cowboy one day and then being a southerner the next. Listen to my pronunciation. I'm going to teach you a rule. It's a very common mistake that a lot of my students make. Listen carefully. South, southern. Did you hear the difference in the vowel sounds? I'll say it again. South, southern. For in the first word, we said ow, south. But when we add the E-R-N, we don't say southern. We say southern. So we say southerner. He's from the south. He's a southerner. Can you say that? He's a southerner. So a person who comes from the south of the United States is called a southerner and they have their own regional dialect, their own accent that's different from the standard American accent. Los Angeles is in Southern California. I knew that he was a southerner because he spoke with a southern accent. And now let's make another sentence with the word south. I knew that he was from the south because he spoke with a southern accent. And let's say that again. South, southern, southerner. And the next expression that Craig used is an idiomatic expression. And he said to put on a bunch of different hats. Let's listen. I like to put on a bunch of different hats and play as many things as I can. You can say to put on different hats or to wear different hats. And that means to have a variety of different roles or to do many different types of jobs, to have many different types of responsibilities. Ever since the marketing manager and the accountant left the company, I have been wearing several different hats. Ever since the marketing manager and the accountant left the company, I have been wearing several different hats. Now I'd like you to pay attention to the way Craig pronounced the word versatile. Yeah, of course. Of yeah. course, and it, it makes you more versatile. Listen to that I-L-E ending. In American English, we don't say versatile, we say versatile. In British English, it's I-L, versatile. Listen to another example that follows that same rule. It's that I-L-E ending. In American English, we say mobile mobile phone, but in British English, it's mobile. Another example of that would be missile. Americans say missile, British speakers say what? Missile, that's right. A couple of more words like that. Americans say futile, and British speakers say what? Futile. And one more example, Americans say fertile, and British speakers say fertile. Let's go back to the meaning of the word versatile. Versatile means adaptable, having many different uses, many different roles. For example, you can say he's a very versatile actor. He can play all different types of characters. That's a very versatile dress. You can wear it to work and to an elegant party. In the next clip, Craig talks about the differences between people in New York and people in Los Angeles. I think you'll find this one pretty interesting. Listen to the clip and then I'll come back and I'll teach you some more expressions. But we're pretty loud. A lot of times people think that we're yelling at each other when really we're just having a normal conversation. So would you say New Yorkers are louder than people from LA? For sure. Yeah, much more intense, much louder. But again, it's not out of anger or anything like that. It's just how we are. We're a little bit more uh, high strung, a little bit more fast paced, so that's kind of how it comes out. Just the fact that New York City never sleeps. You know, the subway's not going to wait for you. The people are not going to get out of your way. Everyone is kind of... An example of not getting out of your way? Are people walking down the street? Well, yeah, literally, people won't get out of your way. You know, you're kind of thrown to the wolves in New York City, and in a way, it's every man for themselves. Now, people aren't mean, but they just go about their business, where here in California, everybody's a lot more friendly and laid back. So in New York, you just have to be 
ready to go, take on what it is that you have to get done. Really? Yeah. We're, again, like I said, the West Coast is more laid back and chill. The next expression that I would like to teach you is high strung. Let's listen to the way Craig used it. It's just how we are. We're a little bit more uh, high strung, a little bit more fast paced. Craig said, it's just how we are. We're a little bit more high strung. We're a little more fast paced. And to be high strung means to be easily excited or maybe easily angry. You can say to someone, relax, stop being so high strung. Or you can say, that dog breed is known for being high strung. That dog breed is known for being high strung. Do people ever tell you that you are high strung? And do you think that people who live in big cities are more high strung and that people who live in smaller cities are more relaxed? What do you think? All right, let's go to the next expression. Let's listen to the way Craig used to get out of your way. The people are not gonna get out of your way. Craig said, in New York, people are not gonna get out of your way. And to get out of your way means to move to the side to let you pass, or to make space for you so that you can do what you need to do. To move, to change your position so that you give someone else space. You can say to someone, get out of my way. Or you can say, I'm sorry, am I in your way? I will get out of your way. I wish that car would get out of my way. And the next expression Craig used is to be thrown to the wolves. Let's listen to the way he used it. Yeah, literally, people won't get out of your way. You know, you're kind of thrown to the wolves in New York City. Let's pronounce wolves. In the plural form, it's V-E-S. But if it's singular, you probably already learned this, it's wolf with an F. One wolf, two wolves. So it's an irregular plural. We also do that with the word knife. One knife, two knives. One half, two halves. If you are thrown to the wolves, you are thrown into a difficult situation. You are abandoned in a place where you have to struggle and fight. A difficult, dangerous situation. So Craig said, when you're in New York City, you feel like you've been thrown to the wolves. You have to fight for yourself. Okay, let's go to the next expression. He used the word mean. Let's listen to the way he used it. Now people aren't mean, but they just go about their business. Craig said, the people are not mean, they just go about their business. And mean as an adjective means unkind, not nice, cruel. And that's different from the verb to mean. For example, what does that word mean? What did you mean? As an adjective, it means unkind, hurtful. You can say to a child, you need to apologize for being mean to your sister. Don't be so mean. That's a very mean thing to say. And a lot of people make mean comments on social media, right? Craig used the expression to go about their business. Now people aren't mean, but they just go about their business. If you go about your business, you do those things that you usually do. You just are kind of taking care of your life. You're not paying attention to anybody else. You're going about your own business. Don't pay attention to them. Go about your business. After the earthquake, many people seemed anxious, but others were going about their business as if nothing happened. Let's say that sentence again. After the earthquake, many people seemed anxious, but others were going about their business as if nothing happened. Let's listen to how Craig used the expression to take on. In New York, you just have to be ready to go, take on what it is that you have to get done. To take something on is to do something challenging. But if you take someone on, that means you fight that person. For example, you can say, I really admire you for taking on that difficult project. Or if you're talking about a person taking on another person, you can say, is he really going to take on that big boxer? 
and that means to fight that person. The next expression is laid back. Let's listen to how Craig used it. The West Coast is more laid back and chill. Craig said the West Coast is more laid back and laid back means relaxed, casual. People are not worried about too many things, not stressed. So laid back is the opposite of intense or the word we just learned, high strung. If you're not high strung, you are laid back. And he used the word chill. Let's listen. The West Coast is more laid back and chill. Chill means calm, not very emotional, cool. And you probably remember the word chill from a previous video that I made on slang words. That's a really common word that people are using these days. And in this final clip that you will watch, I asked Craig if he would rather live in Los Angeles or New York. Let's listen to his answer. I would rather live in Los Angeles as opposed to New York. I, like I said, I have some of that intensity within me, but I'm also kind of a laid back person. And that's, that's more me. So I like the West Coast vibe. I love that the weather is 80 degrees all year round. Now if we can just get my family to move out here. Craig used the expression as opposed to. He said, I'd rather live in Los Angeles as opposed to New York. I would rather live in Los Angeles as opposed to New York. And as opposed to means rather than, instead of. In my English class, we practice speaking as opposed to just memorizing grammar. I'd rather save money and get a less expensive phone as opposed to an iPhone. Listen to the way that Craig used the word vibe. So I like the West Coast vibe. Craig said, I like the West Coast vibe. And vibe is a slang word. It means the mood of a place, the feeling of a place. It comes originally from the word vibration, vibe. It's the way the place feels. It's the character of the place or the situation. You can say, I really like the vibe at this party. Or you can say, this city has a laid back vibe. Or you can say, I get positive vibes from her. All right, the next expression is all year round. I love that the weather is 80 degrees all year round. Craig said, I love that the weather is 80 degrees all year round. And if something happens all year round, it happens continually throughout the whole year without stopping. You can say, he plays golf all year round. Or you can use the indoor swimming pool all year round. All right, so we have learned 21 different things. I recommend that you watch this video several times so that you can listen to Craig and imitate him, shadow him, repeat after him. That way you can start having that natural accent. And I recommend that you keep watching American films and TV shows. Listen carefully. Listen to the way people are pronouncing things. Repeat after them. And pay attention to the expressions they're using. If you're not familiar with the expression, pause the video, write the expression down, look it up online, figure out what it means, and then try to use it in your own sentence. That's such an important way to practice to reach that final level of fluency. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To learn all of the rules for a good American accent, you can buy my online video courses at accurateenglish.com.